Hello. Hi, everyone. Wow. I, I talk for a living, so, uh, but never on a stage with, uh, in, in looking dark, so I might be a little nervous. So, uh, but I came all this way to do this talk. Uh, my name is Chaz Jewett. It's Chastity. My, my, my full name is Chastity. My father was not a hippie. He was a Goldwater Republican, but he still named me Chastity. Uh, my Lakota name is An Po Wik Chakpi Lutonwia, which means Red Morning Star Woman. I'm a member of the Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe. Uh, I, we're right below the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe. We're the same people. The government just separated us into to different tribes, um, but we're the same people. We speak the same language. Um, and so I was up there last year, or two years ago now, um, and it transformed my life. Because of, uh, oh, and just an FYI, the, uh, th those uh, don't have anything to do with my talk. They're just up there to uh, be an addendum. So if I uh, miss up and uh, I'm not going along with the uh, slideshow, that's why, because I'm not intended to. Um, so uh, I've been an organizer since 2001. I've been organizing uh, anything progressive. I grew up in Western South Dakota, where we, uh, uh, in South Dakota, we voted for uh, Donald Trump by 70%. And so I didn't even vote in that election. It wasn't even uh, worth my, my time to leave Standing Rock and go and vote. Um, but I really thought it was gonna be a different outcome. But um, I'm really um, actually very grateful for uh, his presidency because uh, it gives us all as Americans an opportunity to look at ourselves like we've been looking at America uh, for 150 years, for 500 years. Um, it's a, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, um, it's an ugly um, look, colonialism. It doesn't look good, and we're seeing it right now. We're seeing uh, the kids being taken away from their children. My family was taken away from, from their family. My dad uh, um, didn't go to boarding schools only because he was the youngest of uh, 10 kids. He went for uh, um, uh, just a short amount of time. His, his mother, my grandmother, couldn't handle him being there. Um, and, but everyone else in, in our first generation of, uh, of kids went to boarding schools, and at boarding schools, they sort of replicated um, the experience at Auschwitz, at the concentration camps. When you walked into those buildings, they cut your hair, they dumped you in, in chemicals, and then they gave you a number. That's exactly what happened to my people for three generations. We're just now starting to deal with that. Uh, a history that is not common um, in America. A lot of folks don't know that as a federal policy, we've been taking children away from their parents f since we started. Um, and, but it's, I'm really glad that we're at that point now where we can um, look at ourselves and transform into something different. I've been organizing for a long time. I came here last year uh, to talk about Sandy Rock and to talk about the water. Um, and I, after I, 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 I left, I, I, I stopped organizing. I came to Ireland and I said, there's a whole country full of non-racist people. I didn't meet any of the bad ones. Uh, but I was like, there's this whole country full of white people over here who are so much better than all the allies I'd had for so long. And I didn't realize why. And so I left organizing last summer. And I happened to meet uh, an Ojibwe elder named Sharon Day. And she said, well, come and walk the Missouri River with me. And I live along the Missouri River, along uh, Jewett Creek, along uh, the Morrill River, which dumps into the Missouri River. And so in, in, a, in a moment of desperation, after the Charlottesville, I was working on police brutality in, in Rapid City. And after the Charlottesville uh, ha happened and the police just took to the public, I didn't know what to do. And I somehow creator uh, took me to Sharon Day and I walked the Missouri River with her for 35 days. And I realized I'd been organizing wrong my whole life. I'd been fighting, 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 fighting everything. And every day, every morning when we walked the river, we would, we would carry that water from the source of the Missouri. We walked all the way from the source of the Missouri to the confluence in Missouri, uh, in Montana. So we walked from Montana to Missouri. And every morning we would, we, would, we would carry that water in a copper pail. 
and Sharon told us to love the water, to love the water all the time. That's what we were doing in ceremony. By the time we got done, I was walking like a monk, but I felt like a monk too, and I loved that water. I realized I was doing organizing wrong because I was fighting all the time, and I can't fight. You gotta build. And so I left the, the walk and I went to Minnesota, and that's where I'm at now. I felt like I abandoned my folks in South Dakota, but um, I, I didn't because I'm still in treaty land. The Treaty of 1868 is what gives us all of Western South Dakota. The Treaty of 1854 gives us most of Western Minnesota. So I'm still in treaty lands, my people's lands, that we were given by treaty, which is the first law of the land in the Constitution that was based on the Iroquois Confederacy. I know the lay of the land. The lay of the land is indigenous in America. The participatory democracy that we all enjoy, that didn't come from Greece and Rome. It came from the Iroquois Confederacy that, that ruled over a great peace on Turtle Island for 500 years before we were invaded by the, by the colonizers. So we know how to do democracy. And, and, and now that we have President Trump, we're doing democracy in America. We're all over the place. It's, it's loud and it's scary, but we're still doing it. And we're gonna continue to do it until the people take over again. And I feel like that's what you guys are doing over here in Ireland. I feel like that's why I keep coming back is because we have that in common. I, I, I wasn't gonna do this, but I'm gonna anyway. I don't have any authority at all by any of my people but I'm gonna do it anyway. There's a word that we have in, in my language, it's called washichu. My mom is non-Indian, she's a white woman. My dad is Lakota. We, we grew up on the res, I grew up on the res, and, and I, I, couldn't, I couldn't for the life of me figure out how the white people, the, the white people that we talked about that were the, the enemy all the time, but that was, that was my mom. I couldn't figure that out, that she wasn't, she wasn't the enemy, she was my mom. She taught me how to not be racist, she taught me how to show up on time as my mom. She was, she was more Lakota than, than, than a lot of people that I knew. But I, I learned about this word washichu, which means takers of the fat. And my people didn't judge white people on the color of their skin. They judged people on their actions. And so we have this word washichu. So because I've been so, welcomed and loved by all of your people. I just want to give you that word. Give it to the universe. It's a washichu. So there's, there's these takers of the fat over here that are destroying us. And, and we know them. We see them. They've caused, caused all the bad stuff that's happened in the history of, of people. The greedy ones, the ones that can't have enough, that, that, that can't, uh, um, you know, that, that take and are violent. Those are the washichus. And then there's the Ska Nation. That's you guys. That's the white, the Ska, white nation. That's, the, that's it. You know, because it can't, we have to differentiate. Well, there has to be uh, some way that, that not everyone is our enemies. And for me, that worked. That's how it works. So you can take it if you want it. Um, use it if you, if you, if, if you want it. But, but I was really, I was transformed by coming over here before I told you because of what I learned about uh, your history of, of colonization, when we, when we learned about the, the Irish um, uh, famine, we, we blamed that potato. We still, you ask anyone in America what happened to the Irish, is that dang potato. <laughs> and we know that's not true. And so what, what, what are the lies that we tell ourselves so that we can continue every day to, to look at washichus and, and, and live with them? You know, we, we need to do better, and we need to do better because we love each other, because we love community. It's not too hard to become a Lakota. I don't know if you knew that, but we have this ceremony. It's called Hunka. We Hunka people. So one of the, one of the, in one of the most tense nights at Standing Rock, the tense mornings, the next morning, an elder came over to my, coffee, to my camp, and I was making him coffee. And he said, you know, the answer is we just got to Hunka a lot of people. We need five million Lakotas running around. We do, we need that because it's not just about having headdresses and looking like Indians. You know, we, I don't look like the typical Indian, um, but I am, and we look different. It's, it's about what's in our hearts. Our hearts are about community. You can become a member of my family, but it's a lot of responsibility for you to be a Lakota because we believe midakuye oyasin. That means we're all related. 
not just us as two-leggeds, but the four-leggeds and the winged ones and the water. We're all related. I'm going to tell one more quick story, and then I think my time will, do will be done. When I was nine years old, I was taken by three older boys into a camper, and I was gang raped. The colonial rape that happens to our women in indigenous communities is right. Our bodies are the same as what they do to the earth. It wasn't the only time I was sexually assaulted as a kid. It happened a lot. That same year, a white guy, a member of the Ska Nation, came into our school. And he talked to us about water. And he said, when you brush your teeth and, the, and, and you let the water run, seven gallons of water go down the drain. That's a waste. You never get that back. Those two events defined my life. That rape and that water. And I'm here today because of that water. Because I love what I do. I'm, I'm working to establish the first ever water ethic in the state of Minnesota. We're going to try to give water as much right as corporations have. Because 40% of the water in Minnesota is, is polluted already. 40% in Minnesota. Minnesota. That's water. It's a state named after water. We're going to try to protect it for future generations. And we're trying, we're, one way that we could do it would be members of the Ska Nation that wanted to stand up and say, I'm sorry for what happened to your people. I'll protect the water for you and for my grandchildren. We need people to do that. We need people to say, we saw what happened to you, we see what happens to you, and we don't want it to happen anymore. I think it's time. I'm so happy and, and, ha and just full of joy, and I'm so honored to be here with you all tonight. I see you, Ireland, what you guys are doing, you banned fracking. You, you kicked out rape culture. You said women can control their own bodies. We did that in South Dakota, too. We have a lot in common. And now that I told you about how, to, to, how we can be relatives, maybe after this is over, I'll meet a couple of you, and I can hunkah some of you. <laughs> I would love that. We have a lot in common, and most of it comes from here. Thank you so much.